Next Level Pro Wrestling fans, this is your ring announcer, Trey Morgan, and we're here with episode number six of Time to Talk with Trey Morgan, and I'm here this week with none other than the blue-collar brawler himself, Buck Wild. Buck, welcome to the show, sir. Appreciate you for having me. So, let's uh, just go ahead and jump right into it here. How did you get into the wrestling business? I'm pretty sure, like... Uh, all of us, we grew up watching wrestling, coming up, growing up, and yep. and more than likely, like me, you were like, I want to do this one day, so let's hear your story on that. Yeah, I mean, I'd always thought about it, you know, but it seemed like such a far fetch. like everybody growing up wants to be like a firefighter, a policeman, you know, that's a that's an attainable job you can get, it right. hard for everybody to get, but you got a few that wants to be like an astronaut, go out in outer space, be a NASCAR driver, a um, pro wrestler. You know what I'm saying? So that was always in the back of my head, but I didn't never really try to reach for it or nothing like that. But um, I always been like a fan of the more grungy, like redneck, if you would, like of course, like Stone Cold. I like people like Raven and stuff growing up. But when I was back about 2008, I think it was, when I run across my first Briscoe match, Oh. And that, that set the road on fire for me. So I was like, I got to be, I got to get the pull that these guys has got. So, so you mentioned Jay and Mark Briscoe. Of course. You know, they're, the, I would say, one of the greatest tag teams ever in professional wrestling. Yeah, there ain't no So, argument. so what about the Briscoes pulled you in, like, when you first seen them? Man, it just looked like some fellas that I grew up around home with. Like, nobody in specific, but, like, that style. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was chicken farmers. Where I come from, we raised the back in hogs. So, from the time I was little enough to eat dirt, I was in the back of field with my granddaddy and all them. Well, eventually, when I was about eight or nine, they quit planting the back and stuff. So, we just had hogs and black Angus cows. So, that's what, I mean, we, we run the same thing, running animals and stuff like that. I, ours was just a little bit bigger. I might be a little bit smaller than the Briscoes, but hey, I can throw my weight around. So let's talk about two six. Right. So we're we're here at two six, and you have uh, your tag team partners. You are one third of Bootleggers Inc. That's right. So let's talk about your your partners and your team there, Bootlegger Inc. You have. Uh, the record Travis Weaver, right, and you Mountain also, man. yeah, absolutely, and also just joined in Bootlegger Zinc. You have Chris Weaver, a total well. asset that I did not know we needed. So, you know about the history of Bootlegger Zinc, how we started out and all that stuff, and we had uh, another fella that was running with us, but it just wasn't working out with him in particular. So we decided to go back to the drawing board mess around with a few ideas and stuff like that and me and Weaver was at the compound one day and he was like you know this tag team thing's good he was like but I feel like we we would do a lot better if we had a third man again we could run this title thing like the Freebirds back in the day and I was like hey man I said I'm picking up what you're putting down I was like but everybody that I know I mean I just don't think they built for the type of stuff that Bootleggers Inc's known for so Weaver said, hold that thought. He said, I got some, it's a long shot. He said, but I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a try. So he gets on the horn with Chris. Next thing I know, next practice, here's Chris Weaver. And it's been poetry in motion ever since. Fans have, have surely took to you guys ever since all three of you have came together. Right. Um, we had a show at 71st High School just yeah. a couple of months ago. Huge show. Big show. Uh, bootleggers, they came out. Y'all had a heck of a match. Um, let's talk about the fans that we have here at 2-6. You know, we had, we were at 71st. Mm -hmm. We're coming up, getting ready to come back to Rayford at the National Guard Armory. Now, for our second one there, that I'm excited for it. The first one was great. It was great. Had a good turnout. Absolutely. Great matches. Good, good show. All right, excuse me. Next Level Pro Wrestling does not put on shows. Next Level Pro Wrestling has events. So, if you're lucky enough to find us around, see where we're coming near you, I mean, we stay within an hour radius of where we train at. With an hour ride with outside of Fayetteville, at the most, that's not bad. And for the prices that we charge for tickets, 
that's also not bad. But you're getting getting back to what you said about 71st. There were so many people there, dude. If I had a dollar for every person that walked through that door, you know, I could make like three truck payments. Yeah. That's a new big horn sitting in the yard, buddy. I need that yeah, diesel in my truck. life. Yes, sir. That's a big truck. Especially when he's carrying around all that cattle and having to haul it from oh, here man, to there. Oh, man, So, let's move. We talk about bootleggers being here at 2-6. Let's talk about you yourself, Buck, finding 2-6 and meeting hang time. The owner here at, at Next Level Pro Wrestling and the 2-6 Pro Wrestling Academy. Right. So, how did you come about finding and coming into 2-6? Well, the way I found 2-6... See, I come from a real small, like, tight-knit community. Uh, we're mostly Native American there. Um, and one of the girls that's actually in my tribe happens to wrestle for 2-6. When I started seeing people around the house and stuff on social media pop up about C.C. Young, I was like, C.C. Young's from here. What's she doing in Fayetteville? That's like an hour and a half from the house. So I got to snooping a little bit, you know, we, we ain't had internet that long in Buckhead, but uh, we got it at the right time for me, because I was looking at CC socials and checking out some of the photos that she had, a couple of little match highlight clips that she had and stuff like that. So I got on Facebook, I didn't, she was in a grade with my younger sister, so I graduated school like three years before she did. Okay. And I hit her up, and I was like, yo, I said, what's this I hear about you wrestling? She's like, yeah. She's like, it's next level. She's like, you should come check out one of the shows. I was like, yeah. I said, I'd like to come watch one of the shows. I was like, but I got a better question. How do I get involved in that? Well, at the time, if I remember correctly, we had Joseph Everhart was a coach. Um, Devin Worthy was a coach. And DLX had just started dabbling in coaching a little bit. Well, she told me, she's like, come in and ask for Joseph or Tony. And I didn't know none of these guys from Adam's house cast. So I just showed up one day. It was cold. It was raining. My pet pig died that morning, so I had to bury him before I even got out here. So it was all a whole bunch of stuff, and I was just like, I ain't going to go, I ain't going to go. And my wife looked at me, she's like, you want to do this? She's like, you need to go check it out. At least go check it out. So I got the pig in the mud, got him buried. Shot down here to Fayetteville, watched one practice session, and that was all it took. I was hooked on after that. So, CC Young, I appreciate you, sis. If it weren't for you, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Maybe, but probably not as soon. So, we'll talk about CC Young and the women's division since you brought them up. Right on. You know, because that, that is a division that we are growing here at 2 6. I brought CC up. That's family. You got to look out for family. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so, let's talk about CC Young. Right on. You no, know, she's a, a very big threat here at Next Level. She is. She's one of the core women of our women's division, mm -hmm. along with Riley Rose. Yep. Along with Audrey Allen. And the brand new Next Level Pro Wrestling Women's Champion Serena Vell. So let's. Did you we'll, see that come? I did not. I didn't see it. It blindsided me, brother. Yeah. I was for sure CC had that one in the bag. I, I'm not gonna lie. I was rooting for CC like big time. But when you throw names in the fray like Riley Rhodes and Audrey Allen, these is the type of women that could probably single-handedly take over a small town. Absolutely. You know You're what I'm saying? Absolutely correct. CC Young's not that big of a chick. Serena Vale's not that big. But their ring work and their ring awareness, it, it outshines being big every, uh, every time. Like Brains beats Braun 90% of the time. Size is still a factor. That's why you got people like Audrey and people like Riley. I think they come in and it, they, it's like they even it out. You got to have a yin and your yang, you know what I'm saying? So like people might not like seeing a 250-pound person in the ring with a 150-pound person. Me personally, I love it. It's that whole David and Goliath type of thing, you know what I'm saying? So like, you'd rather be in the ring with somebody bigger? Man, it don't hurt. I ain't whoever, bro. It don't matter. Bring Andre the Giant back. I've stepped over bigger man than him to get to a fight. You know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about it. Bring them on. Bring them all. 
All right, so bring them one, bring them all. So if we're bringing them one, we're talking about singles division. So we'll, we'll go there. We have our next level pro wrestling heavyweight champion, Jack Tatum. What do you, what do you think about that? I think if I'd have five more minutes, I'd have had him. I debuted in Dunn against Jack Tatum. It was not a title match, but I mean, he just got it. Well, what would it have hurt to run a title match against a green guy? I mean, come on. I ain't been that far into the business. But I wholeheartedly, 100% believe if there had been another five minutes onto that already 17-minute match, one of the longest in next level of history, by the way, I'd have took him. So we'll talk about some other guys. We have men like the freak show Johannes Michaelis. Michaelis. Michaelis, excuse me. You're right. So he's somebody that's making a name for himself here at Next Level. And uh, what do you think about, about Johannes coming up? I'm really looking forward to working with Johannes. He's got a, uh, he's got a certain quality about him that tends to deter or raise, have other people raise an eyebrow to it, but stuff like that don't faze me. If you'd have known me like 15, 20 years ago, brother, I, 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 was, I was a freak myself, you know what I'm saying? I've just calmed down. I mean, I still got the mental aspect and the attitude-wise. I just don't dress like I'm running a circus no more. But, I mean, like I said, I like Johannes. I'm really looking forward to working with him. Whether it be sooner than later, later than sooner, don't matter to me. And I'll talk about one more person in our single division. Somebody that myself, I would love to see you be in the ring with. Mm -hmm. And that's the next level pro wrestling social media champion. Oh, the show CJ Evans. Okay, yeah. I'd love to lock antlers with CJ one time. Uh, not even one time. We could. I could wrestle that man from now to the end of time, and I guarantee you I wouldn't get tired. I wouldn't get tired of wrestling him. We'd probably get blown eventually. But I guarantee you he wouldn't put me in the same hole twice. This man has got... It's like he's got an encyclopedia in his brain of just wrestling moves. Like, I don't... They say that Bret Hart was the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever would be. They's, that man's tailing on him. I For mean, sure. and honestly, I've talked to him. He's a very humble individual, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that he's twice the wrestler that he believes he is. And he's a heck of a social media champion so far. He's, yep. he's, he's not afraid to defend this title. He's been yep. out in the past couple of shows with an open challenge. Right. And and the last match that he had, not the last match, but the match that he had at Comic-Con right. was a three-way dance. He didn't. He had an open challenge, and two men answered that. Mm -hmm. So C.J. Evans is doing his thing here at Next Level. Right. So let's move on to the your division, the tag team division. Mm -hmm. We have, like you gentlemen, the Bootleggers, Inc., Correct. Let, let's let's talk about your tag team partner, Travis Weaver. Okay. So he's very tall. Right. He got a lot of power. I call him the change light bulbs. Oh yeah. My house. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you got them vaulted ceilings. Yeah. Man. Well, so, no, nah, like the street light outside my house. Oh yeah. Like I, when I stand on top of the ladder, I ain't tall enough. So Weaver just stands on a bucket and changes. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's so let's let's talk about your partner. Right. So how, how how do you feel being with the bootleggers? Oh man, I couldn't ask to be put nowhere else better. I mean, I feel like when it come to me and Travis, when we met, everything just kind of clicked. Like we we didn't know what we was setting up. Whenever we met each other, started hanging out, we got a lot of the same interests: uh, old bikes, old trucks, old music. Anything but old women. Okay, a couple <laughs> of old women. But honestly, um, we, I mean, it's, that man could have, we, we cut from the same cloth. I mean, honestly, he's been to my house, been over to his house a couple times. We met each other's mama. We could have been brothers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we already cousins. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that. Like, I mean, me and you's cousins. You know that? Really? Yeah. You know, your mama uh, and my mama, yeah. they both mamas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we related. Oh, yeah, yes. what's up? So, <laughs> let's talk about 
the next level for wrestling tag team champions, Team Pitbull. I have yes. Baron Bullard and Trey G. You know, they're they're coming through here asserting their dominance all over next level. What is bootleggers? Does bootleggers have a chance to do something against the pit bulls to somebody finally put them in their place? Bro, the bootleggers Inc. has always got a chance. It don't matter. Just when you think we're down and out, don't turn your back or close your eyes. We'll be right there on you. See, the thing about the pit bulls is they're vets in this game. They've been doing it a lot longer than they Baron Bullard and Trey G's standalone individual wrestling time has trumped anything that the bootleggers have collectively. You know what I'm saying? I've only been wrestling in ring since January. I've been training here since last January. Okay. Oh, so you're short six months, just six months in the ring. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, wow. yeah. And um, Weaver and Weaver, both the Weavers, Chris and Travis, they both been doing it about 10 years each and they they say they took off some time that they don't count that but i mean just to round it off you figure there's about 20 years collective between them and then me so yeah uh bear and trey g ain't, ain't they they nobody to be taken lightly i mean i can i can honestly say that after that beating that i took a uh, last event that we had but um bootlegger still came out on top you did um, that was a heck of a three-on-two handicap. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so that there, right there, shows that you guys have beat Team Pitbull. Right. So it means I think you guys should be in line for a title shot. I, I believe the same thing. Which honestly, if you'll think back, we beat the Pitbulls before with another guy. So the way I think about it is so we it we twice. Pitbull, Y'all beat yeah, yeah, at, at least twice. Probably more. I don't do math. Math don't be math in the me unless it's a dollar bill. But um, yeah, we've already, we've already beat them with a bag with another guy. So that'd be like you getting into a fight with a broke leg and beating Tank Abbott. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. Uh, what's the other guy? Connor McGregor. Y'all probably don't know who Tank Abbott is. That's before most of y'all's time. Yeah. But yeah, going in there with a bum leg, beating one of those guys, is the way I look at it. So if we've already done that. Now we've got Chris. We're a whole different monster altogether. And not only have we stepped up like our wrestling game, but our business aspect of it has stepped up highly. I mean, Bootleggers Inc., we got, we got merch. We got snacks that we'll talk about later. We got, okay, you remember the APA back in WWE yeah. back in the day? Yeah. Okay, well, if you got a problem that you need solved, we don't need to know about what the issue or the problem is before a nominal fee. Bootleggers, Inc. has the power to handle that for you. We could stop it, or we could make it go away, and you'll never have to worry about it again. That's about as in deep as I can get to it about that without, you know, signing paperwork. Yes, sir. So let's move on to one more team that is here at Next Level Pro Wrestling. And we'll talk about a brand new team who just formed in the past couple of months with the team of Paradox and De Leon X. You know, they, they came out and it, uh, 71st, I believe it was. And they came out and run rough shot over Jay Wolf and uh, El Soldado. Mm. And so let's, let's talk about Paradox. I, I think Deal you're X. thinking about the first Rayford show. Possibly. Yeah, we, 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 have, we, have, we have so many there's shows. There's so much together. going on yes, at the next level. It's like it's the place to be. I mean, everybody wants to be us or be here with us. So, um, yeah, so Deleon X and Paradox. Deleon X in itself is a force to be reckoned with that is a monster of a man and i mean this man is trained all over the place not just at two six um he he actually was at the from what my understanding is he's trained with the dudleys and i don't know about you but i ain't trying to get screamed at or beaten the head by bubba ray yeah. all day at practice but Deleon x has already done that he's been there he's done that um as a competitor, 
definitely gonna have to pull some more tricks out of our sleeve to handle that paradox he's just that um an enigma you never really know what's going on in this man's head uh the only person that i could compare him to like in next level would be like johannes just because they're both out there it's like you never know you don't know if this guy's gonna come up and shake your hand or if he's gonna cheap shot you or if he's gonna hit you over the head with something you never know so i keep my eye on paradox i definitely do that um I, I like to keep my distance so I can see both of them at the same time. I don't want one sneaking up behind me. You never know. I'd hate to end up like the last two masked guys that uh, they tied up with. So let's go back a little bit and talk about when you got into 2-6, back into professional wrestling. Right on. Buck Wild, mm -hmm. how did you come about? How, how did Buck Wild form? All right, well, in 1990, my mama moved here from Georgia and met my daddy. Oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa, whoa, we, we, we don't need all the details. You was asking how I came to be. Yeah, I, I didn't need all the details. Like, after that, a after your mom and daddy met, after you were born, you know, when you, once you were here, right? once you got into the wrestling business, how did you find yourself naming yourself Buck Wild? My mama named me. You want to see my driver's license? Well, I apologize. You know. Oh no, you're good. I was just. Oh, you thought that was a gimmick? I did. No, I, sir. I apologize. No, sir. I, I, I thought this was just a character, and I didn't honestly realize that this is you. Yeah, no, that that's on my birth certificate. Buck Finn Wild. Well, I, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I thought it was something totally different. So no, no I, I, I understand. Apologize I understand. To you. A lot of people do that, make up names and characters and all that stuff, but. This ain't no character, brother. What you see is what you get. Same with Travis Weaver. Same with Chris Weaver. Like, you think we just bought camo wrestling gear and come and got in the ring? No, brother. We had that. That's hunting clothes. That's from, like, two or three years ago. Still got blood stains on it. Smell like mule deer. I mean, I don't wash them. They look you. <laughs> All right. Well, so, okay. So, I come to a point at every show that I do for all my guests. I call it the call out session. Hmm. You can call out anybody that you want to call. It doesn't matter what company they work for. Mm -hmm. They could be for the big company up in New York. Mm -hmm. They could be for the company that's down in Florida. They could be any company in North Carolina, any company in the United States, wherever you want. It doesn't matter. So who would you like to see yourself in the ring with who would you like to call out? Who would you like to cut a promo on? Buck Wild, this is your time. Well, if we're talking like me personally, I think a dream match for me would be any ring at any point in time with Mark Briscoe would be sick. I mean, I'd, I'd be down with that. But since you brought him up earlier, And we're talking tag titles. Team Pitbull. Baron, Trey G. I respect both of y'all. I really do. Y'all both put hands on me in the ring. Didn't appreciate that. But come the 22nd, hopefully y'all able to crawl your old selves up out of bed and make it there. Hopefully... Y'all willing to put the titles on the line. And hopefully, bootleggers come out on top again and take that extra weight off of you. This is like I said before, man. Show's called Fear No Man. Bootleggers ain't gonna fear no dogs either. So, look, as we're sitting here winding up, so uh, is there anything else, anything you want to talk about? Anything that we have missed that that you may want to bring up, that well, you may want the fans to know. I told you, bootleggers ain't business, man. So, hold that thought. Yes, sir. At only Next Level Pro Wrestling events, 
can you find Buck Wild Hats? Here, see if that fits on your head. We got bootlegger hats. Yeah, try that one. Multiple Buck Wild Hats. We got shirts. That's a nice logo. This one's nice too. This one's also nice. I don't have the bootlegger stuff because Travis keeps all that with him in the trunk of that big old Ford Crown Vic cop car thing he drives. Yeah, it's a good but, car. Uh, it's, it's, a like big a car. it's good for hiding stuff in the trunk that you don't want to get out or people to find about. But yeah, we got we got a ton of merch. And it's still in the production phase, but coming up soon, we're gonna have uh, our very own dippable beef jerky. Wow. Yes. So instead of walking around having to carry a piece of beef jerky and eat it all the time, yeah. you can just take a dip like you would tobacco, because we don't endorse hold, tobacco. Hold it right in the lip. Hold it right in the lip. Dude, the whole Harley match, the whole match at the Harley Davidson show, I bit Devin Worthy, he tastes like pineapples belong on pizza, by the way. <laughs> I, I got clotheslined by Jared. I got kicked in the face by Jack Tatum. Never once dropped a deal. Finished the whole match with it. It's handy stuff, man, I'm telling you. So, Buck, as we're finishing up here, do you have, I know you, you, you and the, where you live at just got the internet just a few years ago. But do you have social media? You want to plug your social media? I you, do. Yours, the bootleggers, all you guys. Stuff. So we've got a Facebook page, Bootleggers Inc. at Facebook. It'll be our logo. Um, I've got a Buck Wild Facebook page. It's got this logo on it. There's another one. It's not the right one. Go to this logo. Um, Fallen Next Level, or excuse me, it's NLPW and 2-6 Wrestling Academy on Facebook and YouTube. That's right. Um, another couple of people that I want to point out. Um, I'm a Marilyn's photography. She does majority of our pictures. They're phenomenal, dude. Fantastic. The lady is a sniper with the camera. Kill shot after kill shot. But not just Alma by herself. We got Freddie. He does our videography. Um, they the they've got their own business, and I cannot pronounce the name of it, but I guarantee you it's on Facebook on Next Level's page. Um, Kendall Wright, too. He's another one of our photographers. Man does exceptional work. So, I mean, honestly, we pretty much the aces of all around at Next Level. I mean, everybody's top tier. So, without that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find out anything about Next Level Pro Wrestling, go on our Facebook page. Go at nextlevelprowrestling.com on the web. On oh, Instagram, too. Instagram, Instagram, yeah. Next Level Pro Wrestling on Instagram as well. Check us out on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. NLPW and 26 Pro Wrestling Academy.com. Make sure you're checking out our podcast, Time to Talk with Trey Morgan. We come out once a week with a new episode. We want to make sure that you check that out. Also, check out everything that we're doing keep us keep a watch because we have a show coming up for you at the rayford national guard armory coming up june 22nd it's going to be our next show coming up it's going to be fantastic make sure you don't want to see us there and anything else that that i missed before we go buck thank you covered everything bro. everything buck thank you very much for being on the show today sir you hey me. i appreciate it ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here with time to talk with trey morgan once again we will see you next show